Don here in Florida and today we're going to go ahead and show how we set up the DRO on this MVN. Reason being is I had a nice email from Leonard up in Virginia asking how I set this up and what scales I used so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and rip it down, show you Leonard what I did. Okay, I'm back. I just spent about five minutes trying to get that double back sticky tape out of there and that stuff is not coming out. That is some bad bad stuff i think i'd probably have to heat that up real warm and soften it before i could get that out of there so we're getting a little bit of a no-go here uh, instead what we'll do is let's get down underneath okay so this is looking up from underneath and this is the 650 millimeter scale that goes on the x-axis let me take that down <coughs> And as you can see, it's it's just screwed in. Like, I don't know if we can see the screws here. It's just screwed directly into the lower edge of the bed here. And if you follow it down, you can see right there the sensor. And the sensor, the pickup, is right down here on the y-axis portion because this has to be held solid there was an originally a stop right there you can see the hole for the stop that stop had to come out <clears throat> and these are the stop ends right here i just snug those right up against the end of the scale for extra security so the main thing here is to get this square all the way across this bottom edge and it, it's fairly easy because you can just run it right across you can use the bottom edge of the table as a guide to keep it square and then it's just a matter of getting your pickup screwed straight in there's two screws for those one here and one here so this is the 650 millimeter uh, glass scale and it's worked really well there Again, that guard, that's just not coming off of there. <clears throat> so this was fairly straightforward and easy to put in. It's going to be the easiest one that you put in. And I ran the cable off on the right side of the machine because I was putting the DRO on the right side. Now you always got to remember your bed is actually longer than the complete amount of travel. So this bed here is a... 36 inch bed and I think the amount of travel is something like 20 inches I can't remember let's let's go ahead and run it and find out so let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and simplify this I'll just mark directly under the chuck here and then we'll just move it off the other direction And we'll mark it on the opposing side. It's approximately right there. And we'll just measure between the two. And that comes out to around 25 inches of travel. So, so the uh, 25 inches of travel on a 650 millimeter scale, the 650 equates to 26. So I have an inch to spare, half an inch on each side on that scale. So, you know, it leaves room for error. And notice that the scale <clears throat> doesn't have to be the complete width of the bed simply because of how the travel works. So, Okay, things get a little bit more distinct here on the Y-axis. Because on the Y-axis, what I did is I didn't use the supplied guards uh, for this. Instead, I used these pieces of shop apron. These, these are actually a leather... Uh, welding aprons that I cut up. I had a whole supply of them that I was going to throw away so made do with these and as you can see they keep everything really clean under here. I don't have any uh, chip buildup or anything on my scales and these act as a bellows because as this moves back and forth the leather moves with it and keeps everything clean underneath so this works out really good and 
what I did here, let's go ahead and pull this off. This is actually split and it's Velcroed on. So I, I can pull this all back out of the way when I want to, okay? And <clears throat> this was an original bracket that came with the DRO scales. <clears throat> and I use this bracket to hold the sensor or the pickup. And the scales themselves are simply screwed in right here into the side of the uh, right here into the side of the casting and at the back side and I'm going to take all that out of there in just a second I'll show you that so <clears throat> screwed directly in the casting I think I had to put a slight spacer at this end I think I had to put a slight a small spacer at this end here to keep that square because this does have to be square for <clears throat> for that uh, pickup to work properly if it, if it doesn't move straight through that pickup it's going to either break the scale or it's going to mess up the pickup so anyway the uh, this piece of aluminum i chopped this all up it was some kind of l bracket or something and i cut this up just so that i could um, put it into this casting here this casting is actually the nut and the nut had two dowels that stuck out through the bottom of it and I drilled this aluminum piece so that it would slide up over the dowels and then I just used one screw I only had to drill one hole I drilled one small I think it was a uh, number 10 screw to uh, lock it in there and the dowels keep everything tight in place and then the sensor of course is just screwed directly onto that I left this little L piece here to guide the cable and that's all there is to it so <clears throat> that's how that works and looking up at it from underneath you can see the pickup rides with the y-axis this way again if I get back here I guess I can't see it the the dowels are actually underneath here you can't see them so and it, it was just nubs it was just the nubs of the dowels there was not much there so th those dowels keep that all tight this way and then the one screw that would be up under there as well to hold it all in you can't see either so and again this screwed straight into here there's a small spacer right back in there and i didn't have to drill very deep into that casting so very easy and this was the and this was the 250 millimeter slide and I think that's like 13 inches I think is what I'm reading on there no 13 14 15 inches so that's the 250 millimeter slide and again there's more space on this slide than I need it it goes back into there and I think I only slide back to about this point right here so I have had plenty of overrun on that no issues whatsoever so let's, let's tear apart the uh, z-axis because that was a little bit more complicated than the other two okay so the z-axis this guard I have a leather inner piece and this is all velcroed in place I don't I had no reason to screw this all in it's velcro holds this just fine and allows me to take it out when i need to and notice that i have another piece of split leather in here and that split leather is so that i can allow this to go around these standoffs here so we'll get to those in just a second there we go so get my guard out okay so this is the 400 millimeter or 16 inch travel up and down is only 14 or 14 and a half inches and i don't even think i use all that travel simply because when you put a, a collet or a chuck or something in there it uh, it takes up space so <clears throat> on this one here i use standoffs right here a couple of half inch uh, slugs i threaded them at the end and threaded them straight in and then i put my sensor right on here now a lot of guys will put these way outboard like this either here at the the uh 
Y axis or down here at the Z axis. I like to keep everything in nice and tight and as you can see from the half inch standoffs I like to keep everything nice and rigid because if you keep this all rigid and you keep it tight it's going to be more accurate and it's going to give you less less issues up the road um, when you when you start talking about you know these these long thin pieces of aluminum to hold things together it, it gets a little wonky after a while so I prefer just to stay away from that notice I also put in a offset zerk fitting here so I could put oil in this uh, with the guards in place so um, here at the top I had to make this fancy standoff here this was a nut off a uh, Cummins exhaust manifold and then I I made this all adjustable here I put a, a standoff collar and then a screw through here and this allows me to adjust this forward and back like this and this is necessary because you have two adjustments on this Z axis and I say two adjustments because the contour of this doesn't allow for any flat straight surfaces so this Z axis has to be completely adjustable you're gonna have to put a dial indicator on there and run this between the dovetail area here and the slide and you're going to have to run it to get it this way correctly, left and right, as far as forward and back this way. Uh, knowing that in advance, I made this all adjustable so that when I was running my dial indicator, I could simply just loosen and tighten, loosen and tighten until I got it where I wanted. And this keeps the stress off the sensor here. Looking down at the bottom, again, I used an original plate that came with the kit. I just chopped it up. And here, and here I screwed it straight into the frame or into the casting. And then what I did was, knowing that I had to adjust this this direction as well. See, that's free to float up there because it, it's it's round. It'll move back and forth this way because it's on that screw. So I, I just had to worry about the in and out there. <clears throat> Down here, because the in and out was already taken care of, I had to worry about the back and forth of the squareness of this in this direction. So what I did was I put two adjusting screws in here and here, and when I snug these down, then I can take these adjusting screws and tighten or loosen up on them and tighten and loosen on these back and forth until I get the squareness this way. So I, I want this sensor to ride perfectly square. So having all that adjustment allows for all that. So standoffs to hold the pickup and then adjusters here and here again i use the original guard that i just showed you that i took off in place but i i chopped up a, another piece of guard made a top section there and then i use the leather around this so as i don't have anything I'm trying to skate back here and i haven't had any issues with chips getting in here and, and messing with anything matter of fact this has been on here for a few years now, and even as I take the guards off, it still looks like brand new. So I'm pretty happy about that. Again, Velcro to hold everything in place. So it's worked out well, but that's about it. Uh, just make sure everything's uh, square and use a dial indicator to do that. Matter of fact, let's demo that. For example, here, if I run the Z axis up and down this way with the dial indicator against this face, it allows me to adjust this in or out this direction in or out this direction if i move the dial indicator to the outside or the inside inside would be difficult but if i moved it to the outside again as i move this up and down i would be able to tell if it's canted in or out like this so that's how you'd want to do that uh, same thing here you can run the dial indicator right across the underside of the scale to make sure that you have it correctly positioned up and down this way and this this actually is very easy as well <clears throat> because once you have once you have the pickup in place and you slide it in this basically falls where it wants to be and initially i just put a screw in one side ran my dial indicator and it really only was off maybe a thousandths or two and uh, it was very easy to dial in so okay all back together nice and clean the cables run right through this single loop. 
Again, I have them Velcroed to the back of the machine. No sense drilling more holes than I have to. Right up and around into the back of the DRO like this. Everything plugs in nice and neat. And I went ahead and bought a Ditron D60-3. And this has more on it than I'll ever use here at home. But it is a very intuitive to use uh, DRO. I like it a lot. Somebody up the road told me that Ditron actually made the component parts for Mitutuyo and then Mitutuyo just branded them. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know the accuracy on this is dead spot on. This is amazing. And anything I really need to do with it, I can do right here in the house. Um, you know, I, it's beyond what I'll ever need here. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's not top of the line, but it, it really works anyway. well. Okay, Leonard, I hope that answered uh, all your questions. Uh, as you can see, the, the physical length of the scale isn't the actual length of the axis that you're running uh, because the travel is not actually the width of the bed or the length of the bed. So uh, you actually end up even with a smaller length scale a longer travel than you'll actually need so these glass scales they do work out well in that manner I have the uh, metallic scales uh, over there on the lathe and you know I really in accuracy don't see any difference in them uh, if anything I may see a little bit better performance actually in the glass scales again another thing to keep in mind is that you want to keep everything as rigid and tight as you can when you're setting up the scales uh, don't leave any room for fluctuation if possible uh, keep them uh, covered um, this cover here I'm surprised I thought that double back sticky tape was gonna peel right off of there and I worked at that for five minutes couldn't get it so I'm sorry about that I would have liked to have taken that off of there and, and shown you a little bit better but this this x-axis is actually the easiest one to mount you'll, you'll find that out real soon uh, some people by the way do mount them on the back of the bed but then that takes a couple of inches off your y-axis if you're moving front to rear and I didn't want to do that I I said you know to hell with the stops I'll I'll keep the extra couple inches uh, another thing to keep in mind is is if you're doing uh, hobby or home shop stuff unless you're doing micro mini ultra scale like watches and things like this you don't need the high end top of the line super expensive stuff uh, the stuff that you're buying off of Amazon and, and eBay and some of these sites uh, works just as well for our applications. And one last thing I'd like to say is I'd like to welcome my brother Jeff into the Grandfather Club. He just had a granddaughter the other night, um, Maggie, a beautiful little baby girl. So Jeff, time to buy yourself some Velcro strap shoes and <laughs> Bermuda shirt. Move on down here to Florida with me. We can race with our walkers okay <laughs> so i guess that's about it again from florida don out